I can't believe it. It's not true, is it? What? Sis, is it true that you had a meeting for marriage? Yes, it's true. No way! I told you, it's true. Mom showed me a picture. His name is Yona, right? He's the boss of a company. You married into money, right? No, I only had the meeting, but I haven't said yes yet. Dad said he already said yes. Huh? He said the wedding is in three months. In three months? I haven't heard anything about that. But you were going to say yes either way, right? Why? Because he's such a catch. And the position of wife of the president is already a given, right? What reason would you say no for? That's your way of thinking. I have my own ideal of what I want in a marriage partner. Wait! What kind of ideal is a fat person looking for in a marriage partner? A fat person doesn't have many choices. Why don't you lose some weight if you want to talk about ideals? I'm not as pretty as you, and I'm aware that I'm a bit on the chubby side. But there's no rule that says you can't have aspirations. Chubby? You're a big fat girl no matter how you look at it. Sis, do you know what the unspoken agreement is? Of course I do. But I wouldn't call it an unspoken agreement if it's something you've already made up your mind about. Huh? I'm going to end this conversation because we're on a parallel track. Oh, hey... I'm talking about how unfair it is that only you got the catch. I'm skinny and beautiful, and I'm more deserving of a guy like that than my fat sister. I'm not done talking with you yet. I have to meet someone now. See you later. Oh no! That's what I'm talking about. I don't like the fact that you're so confident even though you're just fat. Show me the face that says... I'm actually jealous of my beautiful, skinny, cute sister, and I feel inferior to her. Answer me! Don't ignore me! I'm going to make you sorry. Sis, I have something very important to tell you. What? You know what? I went to a hotel with Yona. Huh? Surprised? Actually, that was three months ago. I wanted to surprise you, so I've been sitting on it until now. Hmm. Three months ago? You mean right after we met? Yeah. I asked him out, and we started having that kind of relationship right away. Huh? I asked him about it at that time. Yona only knew that you had a sister when you met on the blind date. But he didn't know that I was so beautiful. He saw how beautiful I was and said he would marry me instead of you. He said he didn't want to marry an ugly woman who can't even take care of her own health. I'm sorry, sis. About that, what do mother and father say? Nah, I haven't told them yet. You haven't told them? Even though the wedding is coming up in two days? Oh no! I told Yona that I wanted to be his bride three months ago, but he rejected me for various reasons. I don't understand. How about his parents? I haven't done anything yet. What did you tell the wedding hall? I don't think they normally approve of changing brides. That's the thing! It's not normal! One of the big wigs at the venue knows Yona, so it's already been approved. It's all so messed up. It's impossible to change so many things on such short notice. It's a surprise for everyone. I decided the first to be surprised would be my sister. Otherwise, two brides at the wedding the day after tomorrow would be strange. No, you know what, May? Oh, yeah? I changed the marriage certificate you gave him to my name. That's so insensitive. So, Yona and May already? 
Yes, we're already a handsome couple, and I'm carrying his child. What? Yesterday, I went to the OBGYN and found out. The fruit of our love. I'm a beautiful woman, and I'm the mother, so I'm sure she'll grow up to be a lovely child. It's already gone that far. That's why Yona, the next president of the company, and the position of the president's wife have splendidly become mine. I see. I'm sorry I stole him from you. It was like a miracle that my fat sister could find such a high-quality guy. That miracle just didn't happen. Fat people should just be like fat people and live their lives as they have always done, right? If you can't even manage your own figure... The idea of getting married and living with someone else is already absurd. Well, you can come to the wedding if you say you won't interfere with our relationship. Fatty, just leave the wedding gift and go, or something like that. Yes, thanks for all the info. I'm sorry for being so good. Don't hate me because you can't marry Yona. No, I haven't told you yet. Rather, thank you. What's that? Let's both of us be happy together. Huh? What? Ah, uh, sore fat loser, huh? On the contrary, I feel sorry for you that you can't say you're sad in the end. Sis, I wonder if you were crying yesterday because you were so disappointed that you couldn't be Yona's bride? Don't crash the wedding with your fat body or something. Sweaty fat people are too dangerous. I thought it was too noisy for the morning. So you're getting in the ceremony hall early because you have to get ready? Oh yeah, I'm just getting dressed now. You're late responding. I thought you were going to fade out in agony. Yeah, I guess it's more like a cut out than a fade out. What? I have no intention of going to the wedding. Oh, I see. Well, that's fine. It's a lot less complicated that way. And I'm sorry, but could you please give a message to Father and the others? A message? It's kind of a hassle. Just show them the message I'm about to send. Hmm, well, okay then. I'm in a good mood today, so I'll do you the favor. You should be grateful. Thank you. I'll send it. Yes, yes. What? As I've told you many times, I have no intention of marrying Yona. Hmm? You know that I have a man whom I have been dating for some time. Huh? You have a boyfriend? Wait, what's going on? You and Yona talked about us getting married when both our families had already decided to meet. I was deeply saddened by how I was treated without regard for me, the person in question. So, I think the two of us are going to run away. What? In addition, note that we have already submitted the marriage certificate. What are you talking about? What are you saying? Okay, that's all the messages. What? I have no idea what that means. Explain it to me. I'm sorry, but I don't have time. Now that I've given you the message, it's a race against time. What? A race? Okay, I'm going away with him. Where? There's no way I'm going to tell you. We're eloping. Eloping! Bye. Good luck at the wedding. Hey, sis! Too much is left unexplained! <laughs> Come on! Sis? Oh, May. The wedding was a mess. Everyone looked at me sideways when I appeared in my dress. And this marriage? They complained that it wouldn't have been possible without you. What the hell is going on? Well, well. Our father's company and Yona's father's company actually... They've been in a slump. What? 
Sluggish business? I don't know anything about that. I mean, what does that have to do with the fact that it has to be you? We need a patent owned by Yona's father's company. And they want a specialized technology that I have. They were planning to successfully link these two to the development of new products to recover the company's business, or something like that. Huh? Patent? Expertise? With the petty idea that if we became relatives, we could hold down the costs in the future. Yona and I have been talking about getting married. I don't know what that is. Patents are kind of a big deal, aren't they? There's no way a lazy fatty like you can get a patent. Besides, I can't believe that the next president won't be him. Oh, really? On the contrary, I heard that he's just a lazy employee who can't do his job. By the way, who will be the next president? The eldest daughter, Yona's sister. Wow. I didn't know that. I was deceived. This is terrible. Tell me about it. And the annual income? I heard your boyfriend makes almost double of Yona's. Yeah, well, he has a successful online business. Then that's better. Huh? You can marry Yona as planned. Beautiful me deserves a man with a higher income than my fat sister. You know what? Yes, it's decided. Then exchange them now. You're pregnant with Yona's child, aren't you? Oh, no, it's a... Uh... Besides, you'll be living with your in-laws from today. What? I'll pretend I didn't hear what you just said. So don't bring it up again. You're going to be living together with them from now on. If your in-laws hear what you just said, you'll be in big trouble. Living together? I mean, what's the big trouble? Yona's mother is a scary and troublesome person in many ways. That's why his first wife ran away. Huh? You mean he's divorced? Yes, because of his mother's bullying. Bullying? As a wife, you should do your best not to offend your mother-in-law. What? Hey! Well, I'm going to cancel my cell phone. Cancel? My husband decided to take this opportunity to move his online business overseas. So we've come to the conclusion that we don't need an American phone. No way! Wait! I won't wait. Help, sis! You chose this path on your own, so I have no obligation to help you. No, please! Hey, I'm sorry I called you fat. I apologize, so forgive me. My husband says he likes me because I'm a little chubby and eat delicious food. So again, goodbye forever. Wait! Oh no! <laughs> Why, oh why? I heard about what happened after that from a relative who knew. My sister tried to submit the divorce papers to the city office without permission and was discovered. Yona, who was very attached to my sister, became suddenly mentally unstable. At the same time, his mother's bullying of his wife exploded. The atmosphere and the family became very dark. Yona's father lost the chance to revitalize the company due to the bad management of Yona's sister. He always stared at my sister as if she were a piece of filth amid rumors of a shotgun wedding. Not long after that, the company went bankrupt. At about the same time, my father's company also went bankrupt. Both families were saddled with a large amount of debt. My sister is treated like the plague by her relatives as the culprit behind all of this. She had to work to pay off the debts. Since the birth of her child, she has been working hard from morning till night. Hey, where are you? 
You didn't oversleep, did you? I can't even get a message read. I'm worried about you. I can't go on without you, so come on. Your dad called and I came to pick you up. Your parents and your brother have already arrived at my parents' house, so hurry up. I can't imagine so, but are you really sleeping? I just heard from your brother. I heard that you designated the supermarket closest to my parents' house as the meeting place for the whole family. And yet you're so late. What's up with that? Or did something happen? I'm worried about you. Get back to me as soon as possible. You're so tenacious. What are you doing? I couldn't get a hold of you at all. Do you even know what today is? I was out drinking with friends last night and came back this morning. Huh? It's my day off. Let me sleep. Good night. Audrey, I finally hear back from you and find out you came home in the morning. You didn't even read the messages I sent, did you? Shut up! I'll read them later. Let me sleep now. Later? Today is not just a day off. Oh, come on. I'll turn it off because it's too noisy. Hey, Audrey. Our families are meeting today. Canceling it because you're hungover from coming home in the morning is no joke. It's not showing messages read. Did you really turn off your phone? Your parents and brother must have called and texted you several times. They haven't connected even once, so it's still turned off, right? I don't know anymore. Suit yourself. Good morning! Wow! It's already night! That wasn't a good morning. By the way, there's a huge amount of incoming calls. What's going on? I know you love me, but the barrage of phone calls is annoying, lol. Huh? Wait a minute. Oh no, seriously? Henry, pick up. I just woke up. Henry! You finally read my messages from this afternoon? Yeah, sorry. When I got the call from you, I was dead asleep. I must have been pretty sleepy. I didn't remember what I sent, and I'm surprised to see it now. Well, to summarize your story, you went out for a drink with someone and came home in the morning, forgetting that today was the day of the family meeting. And now you're finally awake, right? Yeah, I bumped into a friend of mine on the way home from work, and we went to a bar. Wait a minute. I asked you on the phone last night, how are the preparations for tomorrow's meeting going? And you said, okay. You said that with confidence, right? Maybe I was drunk. What? I remember picking up the phone at the first restaurant we went to, but I don't remember what we talked about. I also know now that it was you on the other end. I thought I heard strange noises over the phone, but it turned out that you were in the middle of a bar hopping session. I guess I forgot all about today while I was drinking. And here we are. I'm really sorry. I'm on my way over there now. You know what? There's no way you'll make the last plane now. Then I'll definitely be there first thing tomorrow morning. I know things got messed up today, but we still have to have a pre-wedding meeting, don't we? We'll start all over again tomorrow, okay? I will sincerely apologize to your parents. I'm sure my family will be waiting for me too. You idiot. Do you still think you can marry me now after this? Huh? Your parents and brother are probably on the plane home right now. What? 
don't tell me you've already finished. Even though I haven't arrived yet. Why? That's terrible. Of course. I've already convinced your parents. I'm going to pretend we never discussed marriage. What? I'm already 28 years old. Breaking off an engagement now? Isn't that too irresponsible for a man? You're the irresponsible one. Always being late for a date because of a hangover is nothing compared to this. I was a fool to believe you when you said you'd take the plane first thing in the morning on the same day. You should have taken a half day off from work or something and come in the day before with me. Because I couldn't get my work done. I didn't expect you to screw up so badly and at such an important time. It's my fault for knowing about your drinking and not doing something about it. Yeah, yeah, so let's apologize together. Huh? Because we're going to be a couple. In sickness and in health, and even when we screw up. It's normal for us to take collective responsibility and apologize together, right? You've got to be kidding me. I don't want to be collectively responsible for a vicious drunk like you. What do you mean by vicious? It's normal to get drunk when you drink. I'm not saying it's wrong to drink, but I'm saying it's out of line to get drunk and fuck up. Your parents and brother even apologized to me. Can you imagine how they must be feeling on the plane right now? What? Think about how your family must be feeling, having to expose their daughter's fiancé to such a situation. We're supposed to have another meeting later to discuss the matter of breaking off the engagement. Ask your parents for the details. Wait, Henry! Listen, you. If you don't do something about the drinking, I'm sure you'll do the same thing again. You'd better take this opportunity to rethink your life. See you later. A week later, both families had the discussion about breaking off the engagement. Although we were thinking of having a lawyer, Audrey's parents presented a thick envelope containing a large sum of money saying, this is for all the trouble, and apologized again. After much discussion, I decided to finalize it by accepting only half of the money. Audrey, on the other hand, seemed to be dissatisfied to the end. Later, when she complained about it to her married female friend, her friend knocked down a few notches with stern talking to, so she finally understood the gravity of the situation. Two months later, after the engagement was called off, she apologized to me through a mutual friend. She has now declared to everyone around her that she will not have a boyfriend until she is completely sober. And now, she is spending her time trying to quit drinking. Good morning, Kim. You are late again today. This is the fifth day in a row. Oh, sorry, sorry. My boyfriend didn't wake me up on time. Well, he was working so hard in bed last night. I think he was exhausted. We both overslept in the morning. That's not a great excuse for being late, so please come to work on time. Oh, Amy, don't be so crabby. I know you are 39 years old, single, an attractive woman, but it's wrong to be so hard on me just because I'm getting married in my 20s. That's not a great excuse for being late, so please come to work on time. Well, it's just for now, so forgive me. My wedding is next week, and I'm a bit overwhelmed. That's not a great excuse for being late, so please come to work on time. Huh? What? I'm trying to share my happiness. That's why you are 39 and still single. Do you want me to say the same line for the fourth time? I suggest making this a template and repeat it until you understand. Okay, I get it. And by the way, you need to speak more appropriately in the business situation, regardless of your age or status. Please keep your private life and work separate. Please don't make me say this again and again. I understand. I'll get ready and be there soon. Okay. 
We have a department meeting today, so please be here as soon as possible. Is anything going on? Amy, are you taking a day off today? It's already lunchtime, and you are still not here. I'm wondering if you ditched work. That's why 39 year old single woman. Hello, Kim. I've been at work since this morning. But you're not at your desk, are you? We don't have any meeting outside today. You can't tell me you are on the way to some clients. Oh, no. You haven't seen my department transfer notice? Your transfer? I've been transferred to the marketing department starting today. What? I've cleaned up my desk there. Didn't you notice? Seriously? I see. Everything is gone except for the computer. A new hire will be there next week, and she will be using that desk and computer. So, you did move to the marketing department. That's a popular department with all the good looking eyes. I wanted to go there. Our boss announced my transfer about two months ago. Oh, really? Are we done? Um, let's see. I have my wedding this Sunday. Oh, that's right. Congratulations. I didn't invite you to the ceremony, but I'm inviting you to the reception. I appreciate the invitation, but I'll be also busy with a wedding that day, so I can't go. I'm sorry. Oh, I see. Well, I'd like to finish my lunch, so I'll let you go now. Huh? Seriously? Why are you here? You know you were not invited, right? We talked about it, didn't we? Seriously? Why are you here? Aw,、oh, come to think of it. You said something about a wedding today. I thought you were invited to your friend's wedding or something. Don't tell me you're trying to fish for men at my wedding. Oh, no, no, no. I didn't invite you. I'm not going to let you stay at my ceremony. This is why you are 39 and still single. Please just leave now. Wow. Amy, you are still here. You were not in the chapel, so I thought you had left. Why are you wearing a wedding dress? Wearing a white dress to a wedding is out of bounds, but a wedding dress? It's beyond insane. Are you after my husband? Yes, he's a great guy, and I can understand why you'd want to take him away from me, but this is not cool. I have to do something before the reception starts. Yay! I got rid of the gold digger, it's complete. Now I can have my reception in peace. The scissors I brought along came in handy. Kim, what are you doing? Oh, hi, you finally replied. Please explain exactly why you cut up my wedding dress. Do I really need to explain? That's why you are 39 and still single. You are crazy to attend my wedding in a wedding dress. You are not even invited. You were trying to steal my husband, weren't you? Nope. I ripped the dress off, so you totally failed. Now get the hell out of here. Right, I have to go home. Too bad you are going to be single forever. I'm so happy to get rid of 39 years old single woman from my wedding. I'll be happy with my husband. I didn't think it was the same venue. Hmm? I wasn't invited to anyone's wedding. I am here for my own wedding. I wore a wedding dress because I'm getting married today. Huh? Amy, look what you did to me. My wedding was canceled after that. Good morning, Kim. I heard your fiance backed off. 
I was so excited to be married to him. Seriously, what are you going to do? You brought this on yourself. Please don't blame it on me. This is what happens when you show up in a wedding dress. If I had known we had the wedding at the same venue on the same day, but we had no idea. Huh? I only invited my family and close friends. I didn't invite anyone from work. You also told me that you only invited a few people from other departments that he was close to. I told everyone I was getting married. You must have forgotten about it. Oh, you told everyone at work? Yes, I did. What? Um. We didn't realize we reserved the same venue. That doesn't matter. My marriage, my future. Telling me that won't solve anything. You rented a new dress and continued with the wedding, didn't you? It's not fair that you got married, Kim. What? I was terrified when you cut up my wedding dress with scissors. Huh? Well, fortunately, I wasn't hurt. Your ex will ask for compensation and the ceremony cost from you soon. Also, you are responsible for the dress you destroyed. I didn't want to make a big deal out of it, but what? Not only did you show no remorse at all, but you acted like a victim in her backhanded way toward me. Ah,、uh, wait! It wouldn't be good for you if I didn't clarify things. So. I've decided to file a compensation claim. No way, Amy! Please, I apologize for what I did. Please cancel the compensation. I'm being sued for over fifty thousand dollars, and the company is now recommending that I resign voluntarily. My coworkers have become strangely cold, so I'll have to leave. I can't rely on my parents because they told me that they disowned me. And to top it all off, if I have to pay you, I can't do this. Amy, hey, are you aware of the trouble you're putting me through? Your coworkers are asking for help. Who the hell do you think you are to make me beg like this? That's why you're thirty-nine-year-old single woman. Wait. You are married. The next day, when I came to work, Kim was gone. I heard that she sent a two weeks notice and stopped showing up for work. Kim's parents visited me to apologize and told me what happened to Kim after that. After she left, she planned to move back to her parents' house, even though she has been disowned. Her parents, who were well aware of their daughter, Did not let Kim sneak back home. They sent her to their distant relatives far from them. By the way, her relative took care of the compensation and other fees for some reason. They somehow love Kim and especially their adult son. I interrupt the conversation because it would have been traumatic for me too. Thank you for watching. Please rate the video and subscribe to our channel. See you in the next video. Olivia, you are coming out for Christmas, right? Good evening, Grace. I'll be there on the twenty-fifth. Can't you come on the twenty-fourth? We have a lot to do for Christmas. Just because you are our second son's wife doesn't mean you don't have to help. As long as my eldest son Tim is single. I need you to fulfill the role of the eldest daughter-in-law. Don't be so naive just because you've only been married for two months. Sorry, it's a weekday this year, and I have to work too. I'll be there on the evening of the twenty-fifth, so take care. Well, let's say it can't be helped this time. Oh, and if that's so, does that mean James will come home on the twenty-fourth? His company closes early every year, so he can stay until New Year's, right? It would make me so happy if he came home early. Did James talk to you by any chance? Huh? What? It's James. He's received a transfer order. He got caught up in the preparations for the change in his work schedule. Oh, that's very sudden, isn't it? 
I didn't hear anything about that. It seems that there was a sudden vacancy in an important post at the new location. James was selected for that post. He's busy with the process of turning over the responsibilities. Well, is it an important post? Does that mean he's been promoted? Yes, it does. Does that mean he got a raise in salary? Well, yes. I think the reason why you haven't been told yet is things have been hectic and also that he is under a bit of pressure. With that said, I think it will be difficult for him to go back home. Oh, well, I see. Now Tim and our retirement are more secure than ever. If that's the case, I'll let it go this time only for the late info. Thank you very much. Nevertheless, I'll leave things as they are for you to do, Olivia. Come as soon as possible and do your wife's stuff. I won't let you skip out on helping just because your husband can't come. By the way, what am I doing? Put up the Christmas tree and decorate it and cooking. Make a roast chicken, a feast, and a Christmas cake. No pre-made stuff. It's not healthy. Everything must be homemade. What the... <coughs> Olivia? You were already gone when I woke up. Where are you taking off to so early in the morning? Get back here right away. Good morning, Grace. What are you being so nonchalant about? You left halfway through what you were asked to do. I finished everything you asked me to do, okay? You didn't finish putting away the tree. I don't think you asked me to do that. What are you talking about? It's only natural that the person who put it up should put it away. Besides, you bought all the food pre-made. I told you, no pre-made food. I can't work until the night of the 25th and make all the food by hand. Even you were happy to eat chicken. That's one thing. This is another. Oh yes, when is James coming home? He couldn't make it for Christmas, but he'll be back at the end of the year, right? You should give Tim a Christmas gift this year too. Well, I think 2000 is about right. When he gets here, he can give it to Tim in cash or just deposit it. Please tell James for me. Also, my husband and I want to go on a trip next month. $1,000 should do it. Um, James can't go home this time. What? Why? As I told you before, he has to take over at his new location. Is that so? Oh, by the way, Olivia, you're quitting your job at the end of this year, right? Yes, I am. That's why I've been so busy with the details that I couldn't take time for Christmas. Then, you'll get your severance pay, right? This year, you should give Tim $2,000 too. And $1,000 for our trip, of course. No, I think I'll need more. Why? Ever since he started going out with you, James has suddenly become reluctant to give us any money. He doesn't care about his parents, who should be respected, and his older brother. Isn't it natural? Well, let's triple the amount I mentioned earlier. Make it $9,000 in total. I'm sorry, but I don't have time for this. You know what, Olivia? You've only been married for two months, so maybe you don't really get it. You've become a member of our family. You need to put us first. Anyway, we can't talk about all of this by texting, so come back here right away. Um, I'm wondering. What? I don't want to hear excuses. No, it's not that. Didn't James contact you yet? About what? James, he's overseas. Overseas? What? On a business trip? No, it's not that. The transfer I told you about the other day, it's to a branch office overseas. Huh? The vice president there is coming back for family reasons. James was asked to take over for him. He's been there since mid-December to take over the position. What? I haven't heard anything about it. Oh, I see. I thought James had already told you. I'm sorry. I should have filled you in myself. What is it with you people? So you're telling me that James went overseas by himself? I'll have to hear about this in detail. Get your butt back here. I mean, how many times do I have to tell you this? You don't seem to know what it is to be the wife. If James is going to work alone, this is the time. It's time for you to move in with us. I'll make sure to teach you how to be a good wife. 
I'm going to be tough, so be prepared. Excuse me, Grace? Yes? I'm sorry to interrupt your fun. I'm not going there either. Huh? I'm going to where James is too. Huh? You're going to spend New Year's with James? New Year's, I mean, that from next year, I'm going to live abroad with him too. What are you talking about? I didn't hear anything about this. I thought James had already told you. I'm sorry about that, but I can't change my plans. You didn't tell me that you suddenly decided to leave. Yes, his overseas assignment was suddenly decided. Considering the possibility of having children in the future and the environment there, I thought that it would be better for us to go together than for James to be transferred alone. That's what we decided. How long will you be abroad? Well, let's see. It seems that there is a plan for James to eventually become the branch manager. I think it's almost certain that he will be a permanent resident in the future. Wait a minute! What about Tim? Who's going to take care of us in our old age? Huh? Your mother-in-law's old age? Isn't that exactly what Tim is supposed to do as the eldest son? But Tim doesn't work, you know. Wouldn't it be a pity for him to have to start work now when he's already 36 years old? So I was planning to have you and James take care of Tim and us in our old age, right? Oh, excuse me, the train is coming. I'll leave you now. I'll be busy working on moving and such from here on out, so I don't think I'll be able to reply to you anymore. Oh, hey, wait a minute, Olivia! After that, my in-laws, having lost their golden goose, James, went to his company and asked them to cancel his overseas assignment immediately. Naturally, they were coldly rejected and were turned away, but they still made a commotion, so they were reported to the police, and the police took them home. James, the second son of my parents-in-law, was what you might call an exploited child. Until he met me, he was at the mercy of his parents and gave them money whenever he was told to. I told him over and over again that that was not right and that he could live freely, and here we are today. In the midst of all this, we took advantage of the offer of an overseas assignment and cut ties with my in-laws at the beginning of the new year. Now, we are beginning to get used to living abroad and we are spending our time stress-free as a couple. Evelyn, are you alone now? Yes, I am. I'm home alone. Can I help you? Then could you please come to my house right away? Oh, right now? Yes, of course. Your mother-in-law is asking you to. Now that you're my son's wife, there are things you have to do. What do I have to do? That's obvious. Cleaning the house, cleaning the bathroom, preparing dinner, doing the laundry. There are so many things I can think of right now. It's almost afternoon, and if you don't get here soon, I won't even be able to eat lunch. You'd better hurry. Yes, well, even though the other day you called me over to make soup for lunch, you said it tasted too salty and didn't look good and threw it away just after one taste. You also made a mess when I was vacuuming. There's no end to it, and I think it would be faster if you did it yourself. I don't want to be called over for that. Well, you've got a big attitude for a wife. Troy is going to have a hard time as a husband. Are you listening? I'm being tough on you to shape you up because you are not up to grade as a wife. If you don't get it and you talk back to me, I can make it even harder. That's not shaping someone up. That's called bullying your daughter-in-law. I heard that there are mother-in-laws who pretend to be kind at first, but as soon as the girl gets married, they reveal their true nature. You are one of them, aren't you? What did you say? In the 2020s, when the 2010s have ended, aren't you ashamed to still be talking like a bad mother-in-law from the 1960s? I guess you've been watching so many old dramas that your mind has stopped in the 60s. Just hurry up and come over here. Now that you're my daughter-in-law, you'll have to learn our family's way of doing things. No, we haven't registered yet. What? I don't owe you a visit even if you ask me to. I don't want to take care of someone else and be bitched at for it. Wait a minute! Didn't you guys say you were getting married last Monday? Yes, 
That was our original plan. But we've changed our plans. We're going to do it later. Why didn't you tell me? I'm Troy's mother. How can you not tell me such an important thing? You did this without telling Troy, didn't you? No, it was Troy's suggestion to see how you would react because of what happened with his brother Jackie. What? When Jackie got married, you bragged on his wife, Anna, so much she was losing hair. I heard that Jackie found out and cut you out of his life. That was just Anna's lack of patience. I disciplined her because she was pathetic as a wife. And yet, that's how they returned the favor. Jackie will eventually come to his senses and see that I, his own mother, was right. It seems that you have a fundamental misunderstanding. Both Troy and Jackie didn't ask you to discipline their wives. Even if I wasn't asked to, it's my job as a mother-in-law. I don't remember assigning mother a job to me and Evelyn. Huh? Is what Troy said. Hey, Evelyn, you said you are alone now. What's going on? While Troy was at the store, I got a message from you. What? I was alone when we started texting, but he just came back. Troy can't use this app on his cell phone, so I'll type the following on his behalf. I'm going to register our marriage, but I'm going to take Evelyn's last name. I'm cutting off my relationship with you. What? I sent a copy of Evelyn's and your messages to Dad as an email attachment. Wait a minute! He called me back and sighed, saying she hasn't learned anything since the time with Jackie. He also agreed to let me take Evelyn's last name. I won't allow it! Also, Evelyn and I moved to another state, but I'm not telling you where we live. What? I'll keep seeing Dad, but I'll never see you again. What are you saying? I'm really sorry that it's going to end the same way as with Jackie. That's all. That's what he's saying. So please don't contact me in the future either. If Troy disowns you, you'll be a stranger to me too. Evelyn, aren't you being too deceptive? Troy is our eldest son. He would never say such a thing, would he? He said, then ask dad. He looked like he was about to cry. He was on the phone with his father. Oh, come on. I'm doing this for your sake. Throwing away the food I took the trouble to cook? To intentionally throw garbage all over the place and yell at me for not cleaning up? To go around the neighborhood saying, I'm a useless wife who can't do anything? Kicking and yelling at me when you get frustrated? I didn't do that to you! That's what you did to Anna. I, Troy, and Troy's father all know what you did. Troy didn't want me to go through it too. He decided to isolate us from you. I can't thank him enough. Troy, don't be hasty! This is the last request from Troy and me. Please don't interfere with our happiness. Now if you'll excuse me. <coughs> Evelyn, please, answer! I can't get Troy on the phone. I want to talk to Troy, please! <coughs> My husband just asked me for a divorce. Please, give me another chance! Good evening. Are you awake? Is this Tanya Abelman? Can I have a word with you? Yes, um, excuse me? Who are you? My name is Amy. I'm a 21-year-old college student. Yeah, is that so? I don't know any college girls, and I don't have any friends named Amy. I don't even remember exchanging contacts with you. How did you get my number? I mean, how do you know my name? I took a peek at Jay's phone and I saw your phone number while he was sleeping. I'm dating Jay. I thought I'd tell you today. That's why I contacted you. What do you think? Are you surprised? Huh? Jay? Yeah, Jay. You know Jay, don't you? I'm Jay's girlfriend. Jay is my husband's name. What? Girlfriend? Don't tell me that my husband is cheating on me. And you're his girlfriend? I don't like it when people call it cheating. Well, it is for now, right? You're still technically his wife. 
if you and Jay get divorced, I can be his wife. I'm the one he really loves. So in effect, you're the one who's cheating on me with? Hold on just one minute. I can't believe you just blurted that out. You don't believe me? I'll show you proof. How do you like this photo taken when we went skiing the other day? Don't we look so in love? This is... It's definitely Jay. Jay's here on assignment, right? We met at a bar where we often go out for drinks. We fell in love at first sight and started dating. You mean you're his on-site wife? You're going out with him knowing he is married? I heard he had a wife. Jay said he wanted to get rid of you, so I thought it'd be okay. You've lost your charm since you got older, and you've become a nag. You're a full-time housewife, but you're bossy and annoying, and he said he's tired of being with you. He wants to be comforted by a young and cute girl like me. I started going out with him because he said he would divorce you and make me his wife. So, ex-wife, I'll give you $50,000 to leave your husband. What? $50,000? That's right. A severance package, like alimony. If the divorce gets messy, we'll have to go to court, right? It's such a hassle. You're a housewife and you get $50,000, so you'll be happy, right? I'll give you the money, so come on and get divorced. Are you really going to pay $50,000? As compensation, you're a college student, right? Do you have that much money? I sure do. Unlike you, a housewife, I'm rich. Rich? You're a college student. How did you earn it? It's not that I earned it. I was born rich. I was born into the upper class. I am prettier, younger, nobler, and everything else better than you, a middle-aged wife. I'm a much better match for Jay than a menopausal old lady. He said he'd prefer someone young, and he doesn't care about you anymore. Do you understand? I'll give you the money, so just break up with Jay. Please wait. I'm pretty confused right now. Could you give me a little time to sort out the situation and confirm the facts? About three days? Three days? Do you need to confirm the facts? It's clear that he wants to get rid of you. Stop messing around and just get divorced. Even if we get divorced, I need to get my affairs in order. I have a lot of things to do. I'll get it all done in three days. Oh well, I guess I don't have a choice. Okay then, you have just three days. After that, make sure you leave him, hag. Hey, hag, it's been three days. Are you ready for divorce? Long time no see. It's been exactly three days since you contacted me. You know, it's kind of weird that I'm speaking so politely to you. I mean, if you think about it, you're younger than me, you're having an affair, and you're not someone I can respect. I'm going to speak casually. I don't really care about that. We'll be strangers soon anyway. I gave you three days like I promised. Why don't you just divorce Jay and go away? Don't stall for time and cling on like a fool. I'm not clinging on. I've been preparing for the divorce for the past three days to gain the upper hand. I've been doing some light background checks on you. What? What do you mean? What background check? Based on your name and account, photo icon, I identified the social networking sites you use. I narrowed down the individuals by checking the area around where Jay travels for business. From there, I found out the university you attended, the apartment you currently live in, where your parents live, your family structure, and your family's occupation. The elementary, junior high, and high schools you attended. Your grades, friendships. I was able to find out everything I could about you on a personal basis. You've been posting pictures of your college and neighborhood on social media, haven't you? I could easily identify you. Is that what you call internet literacy among young people these days? Total lack of urgency. Huh? What? What's that supposed to mean? Hey, are you a stalker? You mean I was being stalked by an old lady? 
It's just so creepy. That's a crime. Speaking of crime, Amy, I heard you shoplifted cosmetics from a department store in high school. Huh? How did you know that? I told you I looked into it. And you were making pocket money by reselling the shoplifted items at a discount inside the school. I heard that the department store and the police didn't catch you, but it's a crime, isn't it? Why don't you look back at your own behavior before calling others criminals? Huh? Wait! No, so what? That was a long time ago. It's past the statute of limitations. I was underage then, it's no big deal. And I'm not doing that anymore. You're right, you don't shoplift now. You're just doing a business introducing sugar daddies to girls. You earn money by getting paid as an intermediary, right? What? How did you find that out? It used to be your ex-boyfriend's business. I heard it wasn't really a sugar daddy business at the time. After your ex-boyfriend got caught by the police, you started using his connections to control the business. I know you're doing something similar at your university. And by the way, you've been involved in the sugar daddy business too. That's how you met Jay, isn't it? Jay himself seems to have given you a lot of money. Oh, come on! I thought it was strange. You claim to be from an upper class family, but that was just a vain pretense. Your family is only little better off than a middle class family. There are three children, including your brothers. Looking at your Instagram, I see that you lavishly spend money on beauty salons and aesthetic clinics. And you buy expensive brand name products quite often. A college student from a middle class family can't live like that, right? You also said you were rich. I also wondered where you would get $50,000 from. I had no idea you were running such a shady business. Wait a minute! What's going on? How can you find out something like that? It's absolutely impossible to know that much just from a picture on a social networking site. Who are you? How did you find out? You're just a housewife, right? You want to know? Well then, I'll tell you who I am. What? Who are you? Well, my identity isn't something grandiose, but you see, I used to work at a private investigator's office. A private investigator's office? Yes, a company that does background checks on companies and individuals. I quit when I got married because my cheating husband made me, but I was known as an ace. I took my old skills and used them to investigate you. I was surprised to find out more than I expected. Identifying personal information from an SNS photo is a piece of cake. I've also found evidence of more subtly hidden affairs. It was easy with the college girl's lack of security awareness. So what? What happened in the past is none of your business. Snooping around on me with a grudge because I cheated with your husband is so immature. It's disgusting. I mean, what do I care if you know? It's all statutory anyway. Sugar dating is not a crime either. I don't know if you're planning to sue me, but it's a waste of time. I'm not suing you for this, let alone for cheating with my husband. But your dad is a police officer, right? I hear that he's in a pretty high position. I don't know much about it, but I hear there's a lot of rivalry among police officers. It happens all the time in TV dramas, right? If one of your relatives is a criminal, an internal conflict starts up. If I accidentally leak your activities somewhere, what would happen to your father or your stay-at-home mom? What would happen to your little brothers in high school? What? You? What are you going to do to my mom and dad? It's not fair to threaten me. I'm not threatening anyone. I'm just going to tell your parents. And that you're cheating with someone else's husband. Or that you were going to pay me to leave him. I've been horribly harassed by you. How will you take responsibility? I'll say stuff like that. Oh, come on! My parents have nothing to do with this! What? Are you kidding me? Even though you're an adult, you're still a student. You're still under the care of your parents. So how can they not be involved? You didn't think you could get out of this without your parents finding out, did you? You're so naive. I bet you've been spoiled your whole life. Parents have to take responsibility for what their children do. 
Besides, you need to be well educated so that this kind of thing won't happen in the future. Stop it! I said I would pay you 50000 Be happy with that! Don't tell my mom and dad! I won't forgive you if you do! Stop? Don't tell them? You won't forgive me? Do you understand what position you're in? How about I inform the university you worked so hard to get into? The more you dig, the more dirt you find. Think carefully about your actions and choose your words wisely. There's other stuff I haven't told you yet. For example, when you took the college entrance exam. No! Please don't! Please don't tell my parents and don't tell anyone at school! I'm sorry! I apologize! You know what, sweetheart? If all you had to say was sorry, you wouldn't need the police or the courts, would you? Didn't your parents teach you that either? Or did you forget? Otherwise, you wouldn't have done something so stupid, would you? I'm sorry! I'm so sorry! Please forgive me! Well, as long as you take responsibility, I can forgive you for the affair. After we divorce, whether you marry Jay or break up with him, you can do whatever you want. I don't need a man who's on the verge of ruin like that. What? On the verge of ruin? Jay's got his own dark secrets, too. I guess like attracts like. When you guys go out on dates or go on long car rides, Jay uses the company car and pays for the gas as an expense. And that Jay is embezzling company money to pay you off. I'm going to tell Jay's company everything. Then Jay will be fired at worst, right? Well, even if he doesn't get fired, he won't be able to work for such a company anymore. He'll be unemployed, he'll have to pay compensation, and he'll probably end up living in debt. What? Wait! You're gonna do that to your own husband too? Are you the devil? Don't you have a human heart? Huh? Are you talking about a fool who would cheat on his wife with such a stupid little girl? He's not my husband. It's the people who cheat on their spouses who don't have a human heart, right? My alimony will be paid in a lump sum from his savings. I don't care what happens after that. But that's going too far! I mean, the punishment is too much! Punishment? That's not what I'm talking about. It's just that while I was looking into the affair, I found out about the company's car and the embezzlement by accident. I'm just checking with the company. It's part of the investigation of the affair. No problem, right? And it's up to the company to decide what to do in the end, not me, okay? But, but Jay! I don't care if you're defending your handsome and sweet boyfriend, Jay. You should worry about yourself. Huh? I've already told your parents what you did. What? What? Why my parents? When did this happen? I mean, not really told them, but it's more likely they're reading the documents right now. I wrote them a letter and sent it out yesterday. I think they should have gotten it by now. And I'm sure you'll be hearing from your parents as well. Oh, I've wrote everything I found out in the documents. It covers everything I haven't mentioned here yet, such as this and that. Come on! You said you wouldn't tell them! That's not what you promised! You lied! You're a fucking bitch! I can't believe it! Hmm, did I promise not to tell them? I didn't, did I? I don't make promises to people like you. We had to talk about the affair anyway. Sooner or later, they would have found out, right? Oh no! I just got a call from my dad! Oh well, that's great! You guys are going to have a long talk. This is a good opportunity for you to get that twisted disposition of yours straightened out. Let's talk again, through a lawyer. Okay then, bye! 20 or 30 minutes after I finished my chat with Amy, I received an outraged phone call from Jay. He tried to make excuses, got upset, and even cried. After completely ignoring everything and going through a lawyer, I went ahead and blocked him. A few days later, we had a meeting with all parties involved. Amy's parents said that they would use all of Amy's savings as compensation. But it was more than twice the standard amount, and I couldn't accept money from a dubious source. So I asked her parents to pay a reasonable amount of money on her behalf. Amy's father, a police officer, severely scolded her and forced her to quit college. She was forced to work under the supervision of her parents to pay back the compensation they had paid on her behalf. 
She decided to donate the dubious money she had saved somewhere. Money is money, even dirty money, so it's good if it can be of some use to society. Amy told her parents that she wanted to marry Jay. Naturally, they were vehemently opposed, and Jay refused to marry her, so she lost all will. <laughs> Jay was screaming that he didn't want to get a divorce, but when I pointed out the embezzlement case to him, he immediately agreed to divorce and alimony payments and signed the divorce papers. Well, after the divorce, I'm going to quietly tell the company about Jay's wrongdoings. I hope both of them will regret the way they underestimated me. After the divorce, I went back to work for the company I used to work for. I am working hard, enjoying my job, and making a good living. I can't do this anymore! Dad, I just can't! I'm so sorry! I'm gonna end it! What's wrong with you? What's going on? Slow down! But I have no other choice! I know you're unemployed, but sending $2,000 every month is too much! Huh? I'm taking time off of college to work, and I can't even eat! Wait a minute. I'm so tired! You have life insurance on me, right? At 20 years old, how much would my life insurance policy cover if I passed on? Probably more than I'll ever get working, right? I'm sorry, Dad. Just take the insurance money. Rita, calm down. What the hell are you talking about? Don't play dumb with me. Of course I'm talking about sending money to you. Do you know how hard I'm working to pay you $2,000 a month? I'm at wit's end and I'm falling apart. What? I'm sending you money, right? I hand over $2,000 every month to your mother to deposit it in your bank account. You don't have to put on a show. You got fired from your job, you've turned to gambling, and you're deep in debt. Where do you get that kind of money? What kind of crap is that? I still work for the same company, and I hate gambling. Huh? On the contrary, I just got a promotion and a bonus increase. The only debt I have is my mortgage, and even that I pay off every month. On top of that, I send you $2,000, and I have a savings account. No way! Six months ago, Mom came to my dorm dressed in rags, crying. What do you mean? She said that you got fired from your job and tried gambling to make some extra cash. You lost a lot of money and ended up in debt. Huh? What the hell is that? You've been drinking all the time. Mom works, but the debt keeps growing because she owes money to the loan sharks. You guys can't even buy clothes. You can only eat bean sprouts. How is that even possible? Why didn't you call me sooner? Mom said you were in pain now and not to provoke you. She told me that you have been providing for me up to now, and in return wanted me to support you until you get back on your feet. That's why I took a leave of absence from college to work and send you $2,000 a month! Unbelievable! Didn't you realize that's not right? I thought about it a little, but I knew I had to do it for my dad. When I was in 8th grade, you know, I was rebellious, right? I said a lot of horrible things about you, like you smell bad and telling you not to do the laundry with me. Now I have fond memories of those days. What does that have to do with anything now? You didn't give up on me then. You were kind to me. When I had a fever, you ran to the convenience store to buy me jello, even though you were exhausted after work. Well, that's what a father does. I saw you calling clinics trying to find one that was open at night. I decided that if you ever needed help, I'd be there for you. I didn't know you felt that way about me. I was too embarrassed to tell you. So when you heard I was fired, you took a break from college? Yeah. Mom said you could live on $2,000 a month, so I started working all the time, cutting back on food expenses. But I finally reached my limit, so I contacted you. It's been really hard, and I thought I should just end it, but I wanted to apologize to you one last time. I'm sorry I put you through that. I'm really sorry I didn't know what you were going through. No, I'm glad you're okay. But even if I do lose my job and end up on the street, as long as you live happily, that's all that matters to me. So don't ever tell me you're going to throw your life away again. I can take care of the money, but you only have one life. Yeah, I know. I'm just in a tight spot and I'm freaking out, that's all. I'm sorry I scared you. I don't know what the hell your mother was thinking pushing you this far. I mean, it's a good thing you called me. Otherwise, it could have been bad. I'll have to talk to her right away. Haven't you heard anything? She said you used to come home once a month, but haven't been around lately. It's because you're in college and your rebellious phase is back. What the hell is that? A relapse of rebellion? You should have called me! But then she told me not to contact you because if your college friends found out that you were texting with your dad, then they would all laugh at you. I thought, well, that makes sense. I wouldn't say that! 
My icebreaker at making friends is to tell them that you use the back of your shiny bald head as a profile icon. In fact, I actually show it to everyone and laugh with them. You changed that one yourself. Well, it gets laughs at work too, so I've kept it that way. But if I hadn't been such a rebellious jerk in high school, none of this would have happened. I'm sorry. A daughter's rebellious period is one of the best parts of being a male parent. Rita, you didn't do anything wrong. Thank you. Anyway, the next time your mom asks for money, don't send it. If she says anything, just ignore it. If you have any concerns, talk okay and do me a favor. Okay, whatever you want. I need you to send me some money. The day before yesterday, I couldn't resist and bought a half-price donut with my last 80 cents. My payday is next week. I'll be right there. What? You're coming? I'll take you out for burgers or whatever. Why? Daddy, you're working. Just send me a little money and I'll be fine. Is there anything more important than my daughter? Oh, but you better eat something right away, so I'll send you some money now. Give me your account number. You'll get sick if you eat all at once, so eat something light first, like a muffin or something. When I get there, I'll take you out for burgers, steak, ice cream, whatever you want. Then maybe you don't need to come after all. It might cause trouble at the office. Yeah, so? I just took paid leave. That was fast. I'll be there in the evening. Everything is going to be all right now. Don't worry, I'll be there soon. Dad, thanks. I'll be waiting. That night, my scrawny daughter was waiting for me at the station with her sunken cheeks. The moment I saw her like that, I cried, hugging her much shriveled body. It was embarrassing being a 40-year-old guy, but I had not seen my daughter for a long time, and she was such a mess. I blamed myself, and I decided I would never let this happen to her again. Then over dinner with my daughter, we discussed a number of things. First of all, we talked about finding out what on earth my wife was thinking. Timely enough, I received a message from my wife, Maureen, so I decided to probe a little. Then the true nature of the evil woman who had been deceiving me for so long was gradually revealed. Hey! Where are you at this time of night? Hurry up and come home! Sorry, I have to work late. You should have called me! I got a new assignment suddenly. I've been busy. I was worried something had happened. Actually, something did. It is something really important. What? Rita called me and said she couldn't afford to send money, so she was going to kill herself and asked me to use the insurance money. What? That idiot! If she did that, the insurance wouldn't pay. It would be a death in vain. Calm down. I talked to her on the spot and dissuaded her, so she's safe. Oh, really? Thank God. Which do you mean? What? Because Rita is safe or because the insurance didn't go to waste? The latter, of course. You worried about the money first, didn't you? If the insurance won't pay out, it's useless. So you don't care what happens to your daughter as long as the insurance pays out? That's not what I'm saying. What's the matter with you? You're always nitpicking at others. Don't take life so lightly. Rita is more important than anything else. Hmm. What's the matter with you? You're not being very nice. Why do you think Rita was pushed to the point of saying that in the first place? Why? You're supposed to be sending that girl $2,000 every month. So what? Not only does she not receive a penny, but she says she sends us $2,000 every month herself. She said she took a leave of absence from college, worked herself to the bone, and made money for us. What the hell is going on? That girl. I can't believe she finally got you involved in making a big deal. I can't cover for her anymore. What do you mean? I'll be honest with you, she's an incredible liar. What? She started hanging out with bad friends in college. She changed. And the fact that she's skinny, I bet it's because she's on drugs. I'm not going to believe you saying that out of the blue. My daughter is not on any drugs. I'd like to think it's not true, but it's the truth. Why didn't you tell me before? I know you have a job and I didn't want to cause you any heartache. But after today's call to you and the mess at the house, I realized I couldn't do it anymore. She's just too twisted to handle anymore. What do you mean, the mess at the house? The house has nothing to do with anything, right? It has. 
That girl came home unexpectedly today and she hit me and took all the valuables I had. Huh? She said she was going to sell them and buy some Nikes. How is that possible? My daughter would never hit her parents. I know you want to believe her, but that girl even sold your precious relics watch. Grandpa's memento? I've been to so many pawn shops, but she must have sold it somewhere far away. I couldn't find it anywhere. My grandpa was the one who helped me to go to college after losing my parents so early. Do you know how much I cherish that watch? I know. How could she do this to me if she knew? She has no restraint when it comes to money anymore. Why does she need money so bad she resorts to one thing after another? Even I don't understand. I'll never forgive her. Wait, leave her to me. I'll talk to her and straighten her out. You can't. That's not true. I'll take care of it. You have one week. What? I gotta go on a quick business trip. Give it your best shot by the time I get back. I can't wait any longer. I'm really angry. You know, parent-child relationships are complicated. It's not that easy. If you can't do it, I'll talk to Rita right now. Okay, I'll do something. I'm counting on you. I'll turn her around. Craig, sorry. What's wrong? I couldn't save her. What? So let's cut her off. Cutting off all relationships with her would be the final discipline. That's what you came up with after a week of trying? I've tried everything, but I just don't know what else to do. No matter what I try to do, she won't listen to me. She gets angry and hits me. She even forgot where she sold your watch. She's not our daughter anymore. What are you talking about? You haven't even called Rita since then, let alone done anything. I got in touch with Rita quite a while ago. Don't believe a word she says. I told you, she's an outrageous liar. You're the liar. I'm with Rita right now. No, why? Rita told me all about it a week ago, and I rushed over to her place right away. So you mean you were already at Rita's place when you got the last message? You tricked me! You think you have the right to say that? No. The $2,000 I gave you, the $2,000 you took from Rita, you're the one who sold my heirloom watch, aren't you? What were you doing with all that money? Actually, I'm sick. What? It's a horrible disease that requires expensive medical care. If you're gonna lie like that, why don't you do a little Googling and come up with a name for it? It's true! What? Why is Rita joining this now? Mom's disease is a gross baldy and a hotel disease, right? You're right, it's horrible. Not only expensive medical bills, but there's no way to cure them with modern medicine, right? Huh? She really wanted to say this herself. What a vile child. I can't believe this girl is my daughter. It makes me sick to my stomach. Look who's talking. You're so stupid to spend nearly 4000 a month on that bald old man. I'm so disgusted that such a man is with my mother. How do you know Mr. Baldwin? His name is Baldwin, and he's bald like it's a joke. Rita, if you say bald, bald too much, it'll hurt my feelings too. Dance is charmingly bald. That old man is a creepy bald guy, so it's totally different. I see. Well, that's all right then, but I'm sure I'll get even balder as I get older, so I'll have to be careful to stay charming. Don't just go on talking amongst yourselves. Answer the question! Because I've met and talked to him in person. What? I've been in touch with Rita for a week now. Why do you think I didn't say anything until now? Don't tell me you hired a detective to find out. I was watching him myself. When I talked to you, I thought you might feel guilty and apologize to Rita, or took some action to get back the memento of my grandfather that you had pawned. I had high hopes for you since you declared that you might get it back, but I knew I had lost all hope. And that's when you told me to come up with a plan. But all you did was go to hotels with a guy. I could get enough evidence to fill a box in three days, so I confronted the bald guy 
after he had had his fun with you. He was a really repulsive, creepy old man. Rita, did you meet him too? I couldn't refuse her request to go with me. She's the main victim here, and she's a grown adult, so I let her go with me. How can you go out with an old man like that? Gross! I really wish creepy bald guys like him would disappear from this world. Judging people by their looks is disgusting. He's a wonderful person. He started hitting on Rita within 30 seconds of meeting her. What? You're prettier than your mom. I'll pay you good to do some fun work for me in my new establishment. That gave me the chills. That's the way he sees you too, Mom, right? No, of course not. He's a great investor. He owns a lot of real estate. He buys me drinks all the time and the occasional brand name item. He's serious about me. He's doing this to trick you. Don't you realize that the amount of money you give him is much more than you get from him? But he's going to use the money I gave him to invest in a big project. And if he succeeds, we're going to live together in Hawaii. It's all a lie. The truth is that he was going to open an outrageously shady business and he was raising money to pay for it. Don't bullshit me. It's the truth because he told us everything on the condition that we'd settle out of court. No way. He was afraid that if he got sued, it would somehow expose his business. You were cut off. That's the kind of guy he is. That's a lie. That's an absolute lie. I'm going to be a celebrity and live a life of luxury in Hawaii. That's all you've been saying. Did you treat the daughter you went through pain to give birth to so horribly just for that? Do you realize how much Rita has suffered because of you? She is a child I created for the sake of making money. I brought her up to adulthood, and she's just a tool to repay me for the rest of my life. That's enough. What's wrong with you calling Rita a tool? Okay, Dad. I've already collected from the old man the compensation for the affair, the money I sent him, and the amount of money it cost me to buy your Rolex back. It doesn't matter anymore. Don't listen to this insane, disgusting old woman. You've already bought the watch back? If Rita says so, you and Baldy can take care of the rest. Even if what you say is true, we'll still be celebrities if we do well. I'll leave my husband and daughter who only give me a pittance and go to him. Ugh, oh, what a shame. Some little girl will be a potential victim. You guys are the same. You'll abandon me when you're done with what you want. You won't sue me. You'll turn a blind eye to it, but don't treat me like I'm the only bad guy. I said I wouldn't sue you, but I didn't say I wouldn't report you. Huh? I already recorded your conversation with Baldy and gave it to the police. It seems he was already illegally hiring some young girls and stuff, and I think he's going to get arrested. You're kidding, right? I'm sorry, but it's true. I mean, he's an old man anyway. He was going to hide it from the women who funded him once his business took off. No matter what we do, you'll soon be of no use to him, and the dream of Hawaii will just be a dream. There were other people besides me who were paying him? It's like he was getting money from quite a few women, spending some of the money he got from other women on other people to show off his riches. And then, just like he did with you, he'd go on and on about life in Hawaii. He's going bald because he's using his brain to think of cunning schemes. I get it. If that's the way you want to play it. Oh no, that's fine. What's fine? Now you're going to start your usual tacked-on apology and tear-jerking, aren't you? I don't need that kind of crap. Don't say that. I'm your mother. You're the one who said I'm not your daughter. I don't know this bitch either. I'm divorcing you. My lawyer will contact you regarding alimony and property division. Oh, I see. You're divorcing me and there's still property division? Then well... I gave all my savings to Rita, so I don't have any. Even if I had to pay taxes on it, it's better than giving it to you. That's too selfish. If you don't agree, we can go to court. That's not good enough for me, so I'm not going to get a divorce then. Then we'll go to court. Either way, don't contact me directly anymore. Not me, not Rita. Wait a minute. It's hard being all alone. Maureen, out of some kind of pride, wanted to avoid going to court. She agreed to pay $20,000 in alimony, filled out the divorce papers, and left the house. Then she tried to ask for help from Baldwin, but it seems that he was forced to flee. 
Well, it seems that the bald man was arrested shortly after. Maureen borrowed the alimony money from her parents and paid it in one lump sum. She is now living in a shabby apartment and working part-time to pay it back, though. As soon as that is over, her parents are going to cut her off from her family. She has a poor and lonely old age ahead of her. It's a world of difference from the Hawaiian celebrity life she dreamed of. I'm sure that will be the best sanction of all. I took the opportunity to sell my house, apply for a transfer, and move closer to my daughter's boarding house. I may be a little overprotective, but I will do my best to protect her until someone comes along who will make her happy. Hey Zoe, today is the day you're going to join our mom friend's lunch party. Hello Lily. Now, come to my house right away. As a celebrity wife and a leader of moms, I'm going to show you how exceptional I am. You know where I live, right? It's on the top floor of that tower block directly connected to the station. I'll show you, a poor mom who has to work for a living, what the life of a celebrity is like. I think I told you that I can't because I work on weekdays. Don't you forget that I am a leader of the mom's group. You have no right to refuse my invitation. Come to my place now. I'm sorry, but I'm in LA today for work. Huh? LA? I'm on a business trip and won't be back until the day after tomorrow. What? That's like going on a trip without telling me. Huh? It's a business trip. But LA is a famous sightseeing spot. You are saying that you're enjoying a sightseeing trip on the back of your job. How dare you try to one-up me? One-up you? How could you poor people be so cocky? Well, you know the difference between a business trip and a vacation, don't you? I didn't come to LA for fun. Don't argue with me. Cancel your travel plans right away and come back to join us for a mom's lunch party. I have an important business meeting coming up. Huh? Now, if you'll excuse me. Hey, Zoe, we're not done talking yet. God, what a cocky little bitch. Zoe, about the mom's lunch party, weekends are not good for you, right? Then, how about this coming Saturday? This Saturday? I'll be working in the morning, but available in the afternoon. Oh, it's rare that you're so obedient. Well, I can't accept your invitation every time, but I would be sorry if I kept refusing. Besides, I'll be available this time. But I'm so surprised that you have to work on Saturday, even if it's only in the morning, in a time when a two-day weekend is the norm. You're poor, so you always have to earn a little money, aren't you? It's a meeting with a company that closes on Sundays and Mondays, so the members who attend the meetings have to work on holidays. I'm a housewife, so I don't understand that kind of thing. Your husband works as a manager of Company D, doesn't he? Oh, you knew that, didn't you? Yes, we've been doing business with Company D for a little while now. Well, 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 that's a good thing to know. Well, in that case, I'll be sure to treat you well at our next mom friend's lunch party. Thank you very much. Hi, Zoe. You're already on your way, right? Hello, Lily. I just finished work a while ago, so I'll be there by 12 o'clock, the appointed time. I'll be waiting for you with my best hospitality ready. Oh, Zoe, Zoe. I can't believe you left just because someone spilled tea on you. It wasn't hot enough to burn you, so don't be so crabby. You shouldn't splash a drink in someone's face whether it was hot or cold. Hey, isn't your boiling point of anger a little too low? You should have a more peaceful point of view. 
Of course, I know you are a poor person with no room in your heart. But when I told everybody that how good my husband is and that he had recently secured a deal with a large company, you gave me a very scary look. From the fact that you travel a lot, I'm guessing that you're in sales too. It's obvious that you're frustrated to know that my husband succeeded in making a big deal. Please don't be jealous of my husband, a terrific salesman who is the general manager of your business partner. Oh, did I look jealous? You are the type of person who lets your feelings show on your face, aren't you, Zoe? It was so obvious. And it was so painful to see you so jealous that I couldn't help but pour tea on your face. I hate people like you. Let me ask you again, just to be clear. Your husband says he is the one who brought about the success in that contract, right? That's right. It's a deal with the largest company in the industry, M Corporation. That's strange. The person who always comes to our company is a young woman. What? Our company? Zoe, are you an employee of M Corporation? This is something I do not understand at all and would like to ask our rep about it first thing next week. Huh? What are you talking about all of a sudden? Depending on how things turn out, we may have to break the recent contract and stop doing business with Company D in the future. What? As soon as we reach a conclusion on this matter, we'll notify Company D where your husband is working for. Wait, Zoe? Goodbye for now. Zoe, do something! It's all your fault! Do something quickly! What is it? I'm having dinner. I'm getting a divorce! My husband blames me for the exposure that he took for his credit for the deal with M Corporation, saying it's because I invited you to mom friend's lunch party in the first place. Oh, does he? He's also mad at me for spilling tea on you. So? What? That's a marital issue, right? It's not something I, a stranger, can interfere. Don't say you can't do anything without even trying! I'm in a lot of trouble. Do something about it right now! It's none of my business, right? It is your business! I didn't know that you are the CEO of M Corporation, the company that my husband does business with. How could I possibly know that my husband claimed his subordinate's credit in the contract with M Corporation as his own because he wanted his own achievements? Whether you knew it or not, it's true that your husband stole the credit. Then, please tell Company D that you won't stop doing business with them and that you will continue as before. Oh, we will continue to do business with them. Really? With conditions. Conditions? We heard that your husband made his own decision that once the contract was finalized, he would be in charge of doing business with us from then on. But we told the senior management of Company D that we firmly refused that and suggested that we should keep our business relationship if the woman in charge now stayed in her position. That's actually nonsense because my husband would be demoted. Please, just let my husband be in charge from now on. That would make everything all right. Did I just say that I told Company D's senior management? Huh? This is a matter between companies. It's not like personal matters. I just spilled a little tea on you and you've gone this far. Lily, you seem to have misunderstood something. I didn't bring up the idea of canceling the deal with Company D just because you splashed tea on me. Huh? 
That's it. This is it. As for the deal, it's about your husband's dishonest behavior for taking false credit, and it is a company-to-company -company issue. As for the tea splashing on me, that is a private matter between you and me. I'm telling you once again, that's it, and this is it. I'm not going to lump both matters together. Please be sure to keep that in mind. Zoe, what is this? Why should I pay alimony? Good evening, Lily. Did you know that splashing tea on somebody could be considered assault? Huh? In addition to that, I heard you did a lot of things, like you told your mom friends that I'm so poor that I eat rotten food, that I'm actually in a lot of debt and secretly doing some sleazy work, that my fluent business trips were actually cheating trips and so on, going around among your mom's friends. Some of them actually believed you, and that was so annoying. I request a consolation payment for those nuisances against me. Isn't that awful? My husband divorced me after all. That should be enough. Still not satisfied with your revenge? I told you I would deal with it separately from the company mother. That's it, and this is it. If you don't agree to pay the alimony, I'll file a damage report. How dare you! You pretend to live in a crappy small apartment, but really you are the CEO of a company and a celebrity! That's not fair! Huh? If I had known that, I would have never made such a mistake! Well, if you're talking about the apartment near the kindergarten, I'm just renting it for remote work. What? For remote work? I set up a remote work system at my company about two years ago. I'm just not the kind of person who can work from home, so I rented an apartment as a workspace. It's also a good place to drop off and pick up my kids. My house is located in a residential area beyond the station. Beyond the station? Is that an upscale residential area? Um, are we done yet? What? I would like to talk to you through my lawyer from now on. So, goodbye. No, wait! Hey! My husband has sued me for alimony as well. Please, don't make me suffer anymore. Zoe? Hey, Zoe! <laughs> Not long after that, the full amount of the alimony I claimed was transferred to my account. The alimony that Lily's ex-husband claimed was actually for her cheating on him. Actually, her kids were her boyfriends. Her ex-husband had a hard time being demoted and taking a pay cut. Well, that's it. This is it. He did not hesitate to file a claim with her. According to Lily's lawyer, her parents shouldered their daughter's step. She is now working morning, noon, and night without a break. I heard that she had never worked in her life before. One day, she sent a whiny line to her mom friend saying, It's so hard to work. And they were so annoyed that they blocked her all together. Good evening. I'd like to ask you a few questions. Annie, is this a good time? Good evening, Jim. I'm just finishing up with some chores. It's all right. How are you doing? Tomorrow you and Stuart will be at home, right? Uh, yes. Stuart, who works in another city, is coming here for a meeting at the head office, so he will be home from tomorrow until Saturday or Sunday. Since it's so important, I'm taking a day off tomorrow too, so we'll both be home all day tomorrow. If you don't mind, I was thinking of showing up too, if that's okay. No problem, but are you coming alone? Yes, I am. You see, as you know, Annie, Stuart hates his mother's meddling terribly, 
He's resolved to never tell her about this visit. If she finds out, she'll definitely go to see him. She's so nosy. Ah, uh, yes, that's what I've been told too. So that's why I'm bringing it up. I'm going to go out in the morning and say, I'm going to see a local friend of mine who's in the area. Actually, I'm not lying, because I'm really going to meet my friend. I'm going to visit my friend, and then I'm going to see you both for the first time in a long time. Is that okay? I see. No problem. Well then, I'll let Stuart know the plan. Thank you. So tomorrow, after I meet my friend, around 1 p.m., I'll come to your place. Is that all right? Yes, I'll be waiting for you. Annie! I'll need you to do some housework over here tomorrow. Take the day off from work to come. Can you reply? What? Don't say what. Say yes. That's the only acceptable response. Also, when you come here, come by car, not public transit. I'm going to the supermarket, and I'll have lots of heavy groceries. I can't tomorrow. I have important things to do. Huh? Some errand? Are you saying there is something more important than helping your mother-in-law? I just told you the only acceptable response is yes. I'm afraid I can't, even though normally I would. The timing doesn't work for me. Tomorrow's errand is really important to me, and it's my number one priority. I'm sorry, but I can't help you, Susan. If you could ask me on a different day, we can set something up. But if you ask me out of the blue... It's just a little housework and some shopping. You're not close enough to go there and come back quickly, so it's difficult. Hey, what is it you're doing if an hour and a half out of your day is a hassle? You must be so disorganized or lazy. You really have a hopeless personality, don't you? You are so useless. No matter what you say, there will be no change of plans. Bye now. Hello, Annie. Hello, Jim. I've called Stuart, but I think I'll be arriving there in about 20 minutes. Yes, take your time. I'll be waiting for you. Hey, idiot. What time are you coming over here? I've been waiting until now. I still have all the cleaning and shopping to do. You are the daughter-in-law. You're the one who's supposed to be doing all the housework. And you're the one who left it all undone. So get your ass over here. Come here in half an hour. You'll have to prepare dinner, too. This is your punishment for talking to me like a smartass. I'll let you off with this much, so be grateful and come and do it. Don't be lazy. Come quickly. Oh my god, Susan. I told you I was busy and you ignored me. I told you that my needs as mother-in-law should come first. Not in this situation. You should at least do the housework in your own home yourself. Oh, you're such a moron. You idiot wife. If you can't listen to me, you have no value. Now, divorce my son and get the hell out of my life. Susan, you might want to stop being so abusive to me. Huh? That's a terrible accusation to call me abusive. I'm just trying to discipline my moronic daughter-in-law who doesn't listen to me. Your husband Jim is very angry. What? Susan, that's enough. What? You? What are you suddenly talking about? Don't play dumb with me. I'm at Stuart and Annie's house. What? Stuart came home over the weekend for work. I came to see him on the way to see my friend. Stuart is home? This is the first I've heard of it. I didn't let you know. I didn't tell you. If you'd had told me, I would have gone with you today. Then I could have disciplined Annie in person. Why didn't you tell me? Stuart asked me to keep it quiet, so I didn't tell you. Stuart did? Why? He's not the kind of boy who would cut his mother out of his life, is he? You, you're still unaware, huh? Unaware of what? That Stuart is annoyed by you. What? Being annoyed by me? That can't be true. I've loved him so much ever since he was born. How can a mother's love for her child be so deep and he can't feel that? You should realize that your mother's love is actually your own self-indulgence. 
Stuart is fed up with all your interfering, even after he's grown up. How can you say that? You're the one who should have done something as Stuart's father. What about you? I don't know how much I can call it fatherly. But I'm proud to say that I'm what Stuart needs as a parent when the time comes. Huh? What are you talking about? What makes you think he feels that way? Let me give you two examples. The first one? I've been introduced to a classmate who says he is Stuart's best friend. What? Best friend? You know Curtis, don't you? What? Curtis? The boy I told him not to hang out with because he grew up in an orphanage? You mean Stuart was friends with that boy, ignoring what I told him? That's right. Oh my god, orphans are nothing but losers when they grow up. Curtis is now the president of a company with an annual sales of 1.5 billion. What? He studied with the best university overseas while earning his own tuition, graduated, and started his own business. When I met Curtis, Stuart said, he's going to be a big shot someday. Unlike you, he had a good eye for people. That parentless man is the president of a company with an annual sales of 1.5 billion? You're kidding, right? How is that possible? Let's go to the second one. Annie, who became Stuart's wife. Stuart introduced her as the girl he's thinking of marrying, two years before he came to tell us he was marrying her. What? I didn't know anything about that. He said he wouldn't introduce her to us until the last minute, because he knew his mother would object for no reason if she knew. So then, that's why he rejected my idea for who he should propose to. Because he was already dating Annie. Who in the world was this matchmaking with? You know her. It was Amelia. Huh? You mean that Amelia? Yes. She and I worked at the same part-time job and we got to know each other very well. She's charming, beautiful, and the daughter of a CEO. She's a much better match for Stuart than Annie, who's from a mere working class family. And Annie is an idiot wife who can't even listen to me. If this was going to happen, I should have forced him to marry Amelia back then. That Amelia, though. She's a single mother now with three children whose fathers are unknown. Huh? She's divorced and her parents have disowned her. Huh? She's that kind of woman. She's the daughter of a CEO. Everyone in her hometown knows about it. Your prejudice, which only looks at the surface, is so obvious. No, but I didn't mean it that way. Once again, I'm glad Stuart has a good eye for people. If he had followed your advice to choose someone, he might have had to go through an unnecessary life of hardship. I'm also glad he didn't inherit an insane personality like yours. I'm glad he grew up to be a decent human being, even with you as his role model. I don't mean to be. I'm getting off track here. I didn't realize you were also so verbally abusive. I was just trying to keep her in line. I think that idiot wife and other such abusive words are unacceptable. Stuart is nodding his head in agreement. Even Stuart? It's terrible. You're all excluding me, treating me like some villain. Don't you feel sorry for me? I'm leaving now. Let's talk about our future. Our future? Ten years ago, I gave up and accepted your personality. But this time, there are too many things I can't overlook. I'm not going to change my mind about this. What? Annie, where the hell did you go? Answer me. Yes, what is it? You, where on earth have you run off to? I came to check the house, but it's deserted. Oh, you're home after all. You were right to take your husband's advice and move out first. Huh? My husband's advice? Well, I suppose he's not your husband anymore. The divorce papers were officially accepted, weren't they? Shut up! It's his fault for not understanding my feelings for my child. But I'm sure Stuart will understand. Even though Jim told you so much, you still don't understand. What? Annie, 
You only spent three or four years with Stuart. You can't understand the depth of the bond between a mother and her son, who spent almost thirty years together. Stuart is being deceived by you people. He would never cut me out of his life. Stuart decided we should move out to get away from you. What? To be precise, he decided to take me with him to the city he works in. He took you to live in the city? I decided to go with him because I can work remotely. Well, then, I'll come with you. There's no point in coming. We've already changed the address over here. What? Why didn't you inform me? I'm afraid you might barge in on us, so we've moved. You're trying to separate Stuart and me. No, I'm just following what Stuart decided. I don't believe you. Give me back my little Stuart. Uh-huh. If that's how it is, that's fine with me. As long as you can't understand Stuart's feelings, you might as well think you'll never see him again. Huh? I have nothing more to say. Bye now. Hey, Annie! What did you mean by that? <coughs> Tell me! Annie! Confident in her absolute love, no one's advice seemed to reach Susan's heart. Stuart has always been troubled by over-interference by his mother. He often consulted his father, his best friend, and me, his wife, about every problem, trying not to lose his common sense. On the day his parents' divorce was finalized, he said, It's finally over. My father-in-law, Jim, said, I'm sorry it took so long. After he said that, they both felt relieved. I also felt relieved thinking about everything they had lived through. So, my mother-in-law was cut off from both her husband and her son. But then, she fell in love with a young man who looked like her son. She spent all the money she had on him, and before she knew it, she was deep in debt. I'm afraid of what happens to people who can't stop themselves, but I have no intention of helping her at all. Stephen, can you make some time for me? I have a question I want to ask you. Can I call you? Oh, now? Right now, if possible. It's important. What's so important? I'm in the middle of a conversation with my parents. Can't I call you when I get home? I'm calling because I want to hear from you as soon as possible. If you can't take the call, you can just text with me. I guess I don't have a choice. So, what is it? My bank book and my credit card I left in the safe are missing. Do you know anything about it? They were definitely there last week, but when I look just now, they're gone. Did you move them somewhere else? Oh, about that. I withdrew the entire amount in the last few days and gave it to my dad. What do you mean? All of it? That was $30,000, wasn't it? Why did you do that? Look, I'm rebuilding my parents' house. They said it was $25,000 more than they had planned for some reason. I looked at the bank book in the safe and found your $30,000, so I thought it was perfect. Oh, and the other $5,000 is to cover the sales tax. Why are you taking my money without consulting me? And why are you using it to rebuild your parents' house? Well, we're going to live together in the future. What? It's a two-family house for my parents' retirement, and we should pay for it too, right? Wait a minute. What do you mean, live together? Huh? I don't have to explain it to you, right? We are the eldest son and daughter-in-law. We're supposed to take care of our parents when they get old, so it's only natural that we live with them. You're the eldest son's wife, right? So that's why. You should have been prepared for that from the time we got married. What are you talking about, Stephen? I really have no idea what you're saying. What? This rebuilding to a two-family house is for your sister to move in, not us. It's so they can live with your sister and her husband. What? Why would you think that? We talked about it when we got together in the summer, right? Your sister's husband, for some reason, wants to leave his parents and move in with yours. So, because of that, we discussed them living with your parents. 
You said, okay, okay, and kind of gave the go-ahead. Don't tell me you don't remember that. Huh? What's that about? I know he was going on about something, but was it about moving into that house? I don't remember that at all. I remember you were drunk the whole time, drinking in the middle of the day, so you didn't think anything of it. That's, uh... Your father and mother are more comfortable with their own daughter. So, in other words, they'd prefer to live with her rather than me. That's already in the process of being discussed with them. So we can't live with my parents? Does it mean that the two-family house is not for us? I'm the eldest son. How is that possible? You know what? Even if you didn't hear what was said during our summer gathering... Didn't you think it was strange that we never talked about the reconstruction of your parents' house, even though it's already in full swing? At that point, didn't you at least think something was off? You didn't at least think something was wrong at that point? No, I'm the eldest son and I'm supposed to live with them. Well, anyway, that's not what I'm asking you about right now. Why did you take my bank book without asking me? That money was saved up when I was single. It's not yours. Even if we were to move in with your parents, you can't just use it without my permission. You have about $10,000 of savings money, don't you? If you want to help your parents, use your own savings first. No, you know what? Actually, I already spent it. What did you spend it on? I paid for my parents' vacation. You mean that long trip overseas last year? I wanted them to enjoy some time alone before we move in together. But your sister and her husband are the ones moving in with them. Well, I didn't know that, so you can't blame me. It wasn't on purpose, so don't blame me. It's not that you didn't know, it's that you didn't listen to me. On top of that, you wasted $10,000 with your mistake. On top of that, you even used up my $30,000. I know you want to show respect to your parents, but the way you did it was wrong. I'm sorry I was wrong about so many things. But you know what? Your thirty grand and my ten grand were our money. It doesn't matter when we saved it up. What's wrong with using a married couple's common property to help out their parents? What are you talking about? The money you save when you're single, even after marriage, your spouse can't spend it without your permission. Huh? What kind of rule is that? I'm just telling you what the law says. The law? Is there really a law like that? The money you saved when you were single is your own property. Just because we're married doesn't mean you can spend my 30000 without my permission. And I can't spend your 10000 without your permission either. Do you get it? What's with all this the law, the law, the law crap? Marital duties and respect to parents are more important than those things. Don't you have any feelings for your relatives? Don't you appreciate my devotion to my parents? If you want to use your own money for this devotion, you can do whatever you want. I'm saying I wish you would have consulted me before taking out my money. It was a mistake to give each other our passwords. I think we should just get a divorce. What? Why? I didn't think you were this selfish and stupid. I don't trust you, so I'm going to consult a lawyer. Of course, you'll have to return that $30,000. Hey, calm down. I'll be home soon. Let's talk about this properly. I can't. I'm going to go stay at my parents' house now. <coughs> That night, my in-laws came to my parents' house. They said that my husband had told them that my $30,000 was money that he had saved by himself. My in-laws, who were suspicious of my husband's flustered behavior on the phone, questioned him and found out what had happened. In a panic, they came to apologize with the bank book, credit card, and $30,000 in cash that had already been withdrawn. My husband, who was the main perpetrator in this situation, did not come to apologize directly. Instead, he took the stance that, your money's been returned, so get over it. So I quickly divorced him with the help of a lawyer.
However, after that, I continued to receive messages from him asking me to get back together with him, so I blocked him. I also changed my phone number and email address, moved out of my parents' house, and started working. Thank you for watching! Please rate the video and subscribe to our channel. See you in the next video!